What, what this piece has is it's got cracks which are going in the plane of the piece. So here, under the microscope, is the change that you've got in that ridge. And, and it's actually, I mean, you, you can just imagine how it's been forced up, and actually you're getting, you're getting microfractures. This is going to break off eventually. So this is, this is weathering of nephrite jade. Um, I personally believe that some of this highly focal linear weathering must be caused by roots, plant roots, acting as a vehicle for water and chemicals, because it's hard to see. This is one piece, again with characters on it. It's a quite a big disc about that size. Remember, it's the same icon as that very early pure, nef pure tremolite disc I showed you, which was a little piece. And this is, th there's this line here, which is basically a line of expanded crystals. And actually, on this piece, um, on the other side, there's a, there's a similar line. And it's looks, it looks very much as if a root came in, split, and went over the surface. Um, it, it, I've, uh, nobody has described it. Nobody's proved it. But it seems intrinsically likely that these are caused by root marks. And another feature that, I mean, this, this, this crystal actually here is one centimeter long. But this is, this is hydration of existing crystals. It's not crystal deposition on the surface. And there, you know, crystal, crystal expansion across carving lines. Presumably this figure means the sun, this character. This little, one, one of the little owls shows you, you, just how focal that this can be. Unweathered here, then a band of weathering. Unweathered, more weathering, unweathered. So how could such natural-looking natural looking changes be faked, I'd like to ask, because a lot of people say they are. And why, when the piece would be worth much more with people who have money? I mean, uh, I have total calculated what I've spent on over 10 years. It was a bit of a shock. I've spent 50,000 US dollars on more than 1,000 pieces. I mean, but that compares with 2.5 million on one piece in Shenyang Museum. Another, another thing, watermarks. Look, especially in suspension holes, um, and this is a little piece, just shows it's not hardly weathered at all, but there's evidence there of a chromatographic process occurring as water dried out in that suspension hole. These, these are, uh, the, the, uh, th this piece I was given, actually. And when I got home, I saw there were watermarks on the right of the eye socket, so I thought, okay, that's the explanation for that. It had been spooked out, and that's how it's, um, it's got wet. And no other explanation. I showed this to Professor Guo, or told, and I said, "How could you, how could you, how can you explain that?" And he said, "I can't explain it, but it's still fake." Okay. Then a year and a half later, in Australia, I was visiting the Wilsons, and I found the sister piece, same jade, and its watermarks are in the other eye sockets. So it just seems likely. I mean, I've feel that these two skulls with birds on the top must be happier now that they've been, they've been um, reunited. Extraneous crystals do occur, and these must come from groundwater. And this piece is an example. And these are probably markers for particular tomb sites, too, uh, where I'm trying to categorize them, etc., and do chemistry on them. But this, in the recesses, these are the crystals that this piece has got. There are two types of manganese containing crystals. There are these spicular ones, spicular ones here, and there are long black ones. Now, they're not simple, these, because there are, they look like uh, minerals have been deposited on the surface of organic crystals. But, I mean, that's very interesting phenomenon, as is this. The, we saw these earlier, and the one on the right, if you look naked eye, you'll see that there's a black ring and an orange ring. In, the, in, that, in that hole. And what's happened there is that the black ring, there are two types of manganese-containing crystals um, that presumably these ones are much more soluble and therefore came out of solution as the thing finally dried out. There's lots there that is internal evidence. This piece is a nice piece, and it's got a different type of crystal on the surface. Now, these have never been described by anybody else, but 
you know, to me, they are um, internal evidence of authenticity. These two, are, these two turtles dancing face to face, and that heart shape there, these clusters of spicular crystals. And we're just trying to work out what they are. Then you get crystal dropout holes in some pieces, where because there are of the other minerals that are incorporated, water will seep in, and you get appearances like this, where clearly a crystal has popped out. And in this particular piece, it's a very humble little, a humble little disc with two cicadas on it, there's actually one area where the crystal is still present. So could these be faked? Apparently. Then there's accidents of production. I really like this, and when we're, we've got another five minutes, and then we'll, we'll be finished. Uh, this is you often see little stone, little uh, uh, little uh, quartz crystals impacted, and this one's impacted with a with a green crystal. Um, but this is a really real favourite. This is a bird I showed you. This is this guy who was really depressed and had a skull on top of a skull. We had this lovely bird. And this is one of the only, I think it's the only piece that I've got where the, where the suspension holes were never finished. And there's, it's not that, I mean, he was doing them, clearly, when news came that the old boy had died. Because on the left, it's only had one drill. The right, he's garnished it twice. So you can just see the conversation, you know. Have you got that bird on top of the skull, Joe? Yep, yep, uh, I'm just working on the suspension. Oh, well, forget it, forget it. He's just snuffed it. It's going in the grave. Chances of David Anderson finding this 5,000 years later is very, very slim. And this is another accident of production, bottom right here. It's not a very good photograph. But I, I like you, you don't see a lot of grinding marks on these. But this piece has got drill marks. Remember, this has got to be ground, um, which look like the drills that you get with a bow drill, the marks with a bow drill. But also, uh, the the... the it's very, very poor quality jade. It's loaded with pyrite, and these pyrite crystals have been partially forced out. And my presumption is they couldn't polish this too much because, uh, uh, because the pyrite is very soft, and you know that would have fallen out. Anyway, it's, it's an interesting feature that you see. I've also got new evidence, finally, of polishing material in jade from really imperfect looking pieces where you've got very frequently, it must be 20 or more pieces that I've got, with these little green crisp, green pebbles impacted. And what these are, uh, the, the, there's one more piece I'll show you. This piece has got one um, up its backside with tremolite microcrystals on the surface. And these are, we've done the studies, they're a substance called aventurine, which is a perfect polishing material which has been lost to Chinese culture. It's microcrystalline quartz and mica. And mica is a, a solid lubricant. And the crystals are about 50 microns, a perfect polishing material for jade. 